Thanks everyone for being here tonight. Um, if you haven't seen in the slide here, just please change your Zoom name to your name, state, and your preferred pronouns. And drop into the chat your name, your state, and team that you're from and something that is giving you life. So we're gonna get started. Thanks everybody for being here. Um, we can move to the next slide. And this is session three of our four part series. Are you feeling alone? It's better together. Um, this is our one-on-one -on -one conversation training tonight. So thank you everyone for being here. And we can go to the next slide. Tonight, the facilitators are Arelita Serena, who is staff at Mothers Out Front, and Lupita Torres, who is uh, one of the organizing members that works with Arelita in California. So thank you both so much. Let's give them a round of applause for tonight. Thank you for those <laughs> funny, the muted round of applauses. <laughs> and we can move to the next slide. All right. Uh, well, thank you for the warm welcome. I want to pass this off to Lupita and then I will follow Lupita. So one of the first things um, for movement building, hello everybody, by the way, thanks for having me here, um, is we want to respect the land that we're on. And that's basically recognizing indigenous lands, um, the various indigenous lands. Um, these are sovereign nations. So we're, before uh, the arrival of the Europeans, we do have to remember there was a history here before and there continues to be. So one of the things that we do to uh, show solidarity with um, communities of color, uh, Native American indigenous groups is recognizing that there's indigenous land and acknowledging the painful history of genocide and the forced occupation of um, their territory, which is the, the homeland of the native people. And we pledge not to replicate that history in our own movement for climate justice. So one of the things that me and Adelita really put to the forefront um, when we work in uh, groups, uh, organizing with different um, people of different backgrounds is to honor and respect whose land we're on. And so Adelita will be doing that with the land acknowledgement. Adelita. Thank you, Lupita. And again, hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. And, you know, both me and Lupita um, are Indigenous women, uh, but we also recognize that we, you know, have, have being Indigenous, we are still visitors to um, the lands in which we currently reside. Uh, and so I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and share our land acknowledgement for our area. And I will um, attempt to also um, make sure it acknowledges the areas in which you're all coming from. Um, we should take a moment to acknowledge the land on which we are gathered. For thousands of years, this land has been the home of the Patwin people and wherever you reside, the, the traditional native peoples of that area. Today, there are, uh, the Patwin people have remained committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries. It has been cherished and protected as elders have instructed the young through generations. We are honored and grateful to be gathered on this Zoom today here on the traditional lands here of the Patwin people and wherever you are residing at the traditional indigenous uh, tribal people of those lands. Thank you. Thank you, Adelita, and we can go to the next slide here. For people who just joined, um, please chat in with where you're from, your team, your state, and what's giving you life. Um, if you have any technical issues, you can directly message technical support, which is um, a person, <laughs> Shauna, um, but she's renamed herself technical support. So. Um, just some meeting norms for today. If you've been with us in this series, these are a repeat. Um, for, if, for the people who are new today, please keep your camera on if you can. Let's be kind to others, respect racial identity and pronouns, um, learn to unlearn and self-transform, and both participate, but you know, step forward if you're someone who maybe is a little more shy, doesn't speak up as much, and step back if you tend to need to hold yourself back from taking up too much space. Um, so we can go to the next slide. And this is Lupita.
Sorry, guys. <laughs> I had to switch areas. It was too loud where I was at. Um, our mission for Mothers Out Front is uh, building power as mothers and ensure all our children have a livable climate for the future. And so that we kept it very general, very broad, uh, specifically because we want to be able to incorporate different elements of working within the climate justice movement. And one of the things we strive for is equity and inclusion and to have uh, frontline communities uh, be involved in the work that we do. Thank you, Lupita. Um, so for, for those of you who have been with us again, this is a review, but this is a four part series. So we started off with organizing across race and class last Tuesday, then planting a lot of seeds on Thursday. Today we are on the one -on -one, one on one conversation. And then this Thursday is our final of the series. So said the group social meetings. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so today's agenda, we have a welcome and an intro, which we're almost done with, uh, meeting each other, how it all connects, why we do one-on-ones, a demo of that, a good one-on-one, -on -one, and key steps, do's and don'ts. Then you all will get a chance to practice, and we'll debrief that and finish for the night, and we'll be done by 9.30 tonight. Um, next slide. Thank you. Um, so what we're going to do to start off today, actually, is just there hasn't been as many opportunities as we would like for you all to get to know each other across the country. And so we're going to break out into pairs now and have five minutes to just say what from the series so far has influenced how you'll be doing organizing going forward differently. Um, so you can chat about that. And if you haven't been in the series so far, you can pick anything you want to talk about. <laughs> but hopefully a lot of you are return people today. Uh, so you will have something pop up in a moment here that will break you out into pairs with someone maybe you know, maybe you don't know, and we'll have five minutes. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get like move us along. Um, everybody's coming out from breakout and now is a good time, you know, just to really quick report back what was discussed and, um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Like I had Nilly, um, me and Nilly, you know, we're in a breakout and I actually happened to know Nilly from, you know, a, a national gathering that took place years ago. And so it was good to one, like just see you again face to face. And, um, you know, I, if you don't mind me sharing Nilly, just kind of some of what you shared and that is that uh, what she got from, the first training in the series was the series was the reframing. Uh, some reframing is, is something that she's going to be taking away uh, around uh, tabling and also like questions um, to ask individuals that are coming up to your table. And this can be something, you know, not just a tabling type of scenario. It could be like you're at a grocery store or you're, you know, at the park with your kids and you start talking to another mom. Uh, Nelly, did you want to say anything else about that? All right. It seems like I covered it. I'm going to popcorn it over to, um, I see Christy's iPad. Do you want to share? You're on mute, Christy. You're on mute. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, ladies. Um, I just spoke to two Mothers Out Front staff from the um, Massachusetts, and we were sharing about how, what we got out of the first class and some books that we suggested to each other about how to find more things out. And you can popcorn it over. If anybody also is eager to share. I can share, Lalita, if that's okay. Okay, cool, yeah. Sorry guys, my technical difficulties. I'm gonna keep my video off if I have in and out of the video, sorry. Um, I had a meeting with Carol Walker, very nice lady um, from, Carol, I'm sorry. Where are you from? I think Boston? Winthrop, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> but we talked about um, 
uh, accessibility and having um, a lot of reading material. And I had suggested maybe in the future, Mothers Out Front could consider those that might have such issues and um, potentially invest in like audio tapes, um, things of that nature. And uh, also um, talking about some of the things that Carol was learning in the group and um, how it affected her life personally. I don't wanna go into too much detail, but um, it was positive. And um, Carol, I don't know if you wanted to chime in or share anything that you might have well i i guess uh, made made impression on me that uh of uh that i'm i'm better prepared to uh to to listen to uh to people of uh, different groups and uh it was a very thorough training on uh yeah, so it was a very good discussion. And I, I haven't attended the series because I'm presenting, but it was interesting to hear the feedback. Yeah, the, um, I, the idea of, of segregation. There, yeah, redlining, that's right. We really are segregated uh, white people from other cultures. And uh, that's why we don't know people that well. And it would be a blessing to our lives to know more people uh, and spend more time with them and understand them. Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I just want to uh, invite people to chime in in the chat with their shares because we are going to have to move on. Um, so please share some takeaways from the trainings that you've attended in this series. And we really appreciate you sharing in the pairs um so yeah i'll just yeah she Sorry, yeah go ahead. okay i don't know who's next <laughs> yeah go ahead okay if it's the base building slide i think it's sheila's and then mine was the one previously so sheila you're on mute um let's go back one slide keisha yeah there we are and that's you little pizza Okay, sorry guys, I wasn't sure if they had gotten switched. Um, the goals of this training, uh, by the end of the training, you'll be able to understand the powerful role that one-on-ones can play in building committed relationships, engaging new members, moving people up the ladder of engagement, and connecting across differences of race, class, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, ability, ideology, and more. Um, you should be able to know how to conduct a one-on-one, -on -one or at least have a little bit of experience doing so based on some of the advice that we're gonna be giving you. Practice and demonstrate skill with the five components of an effective one-to-one. -one. Have a clear plan and idea of how you will use the one-to-one -to, -one to build out from your initial outreach and contact and understand the importance of and how to follow up in a timely manner after one-to-one -to, -one to engage in next steps. And Sheila? All right, so this is just a quick review, especially for folks who have been here for the whole series of how it all connects. So, so far what we've discussed is base building, um, what it is, you know, the idea that we're bringing together a lot of people, especially people directly affected by the issues they're fighting for, so that they can organize and take back power, in this case from the fossil fuel industry um, to change global warming. And so why base building is so important is that idea of power in numbers. You know, we can't organize, we can't win against these huge corporations that have tons of money, um, unless we happen to have all that money, which I don't think any of us do comparatively. Um, it's that power in numbers. So we have to reach lots of people and lots of people across differences. We have to come together to beat back the evil. Um, and so that's also why it's important across race and class. We all stand to benefit from coming together with a shared vision for a better world. Um, but especially by, by following the lead of the people most directly affected by the issue. Um, so we went over how to do some base building tactics. We talked about canvassing, we talked about tabling, how we can use social media to reach a lot of people. Um, and how we can reach out to centers of community like churches, centers of faith, um, community centers that are already existing in the communities that we're organizing in. So today's session is about 
what the next step would be after that initial contact that you make, that initial planting of the seed. So anyone who likes to plant um, seedlings and you know that you've got to plant so many more than are actually going to grow, right? And so th I think of this next step as the little seedling that grows. Like maybe we planted 100 seeds and maybe we'll get 20 one-on-ones. Um, so in other words, we've talked to 100 people in canvassing, for instance, and now 20 people might agree to hold a one-on-one -on -one with us which is just a chance to go deeper, build that relationship, um, figure out what they're motivated by, where our shared interests are. So next slide. All right. All right, what is a one-to-one? -one? Um, basically, you, I want you guys to really look at this picture that I'm sharing. That's an, a picture that was actually taken on a one-on-one. -on -one. And I mean, I want you to think about what you see. A baby, I'm cradling a baby that is not my own. Um, and the woman sitting next to me is a team member, Susie. And we're both there visiting, uh, you know, another team member who who just had her young daughter there in my arms, and you know there is a lot of trust that is happening there. I mean, I'm there. I'm holding a newborn, and I'm I'm talking to a, one of my team leaders, just checking in on how she's doing, and I really am really just being present in, in the moment. And so a one-on-one -on -one is something and an opportunity to really uh, be present with someone and hear them be present, listen. Um, it's an intentional conversation between two people to share, listen, and learn and explore mutual interest. And, you know, the, I consider my team members my friends, you know, because I, we trust each other uh, with this very important mission that we're all in together. And that is, as mentioned, you know, to fight the fossil fuel industry to stop climate change. So these are really intentional conversations. They're very emotional. They're you know, it, it, as moms, we have a lot of investment into the future of our children. So let, let you know, take these one-on-ones as an opportunity to really dive into um, how, how passionate each one is to um, achieve, you know, the change that we need to see. But again, you know, with, with the kind of ideas and momentum that is the right fit for you and your team. Um, and so, you know, what I would invite people to, you know, share in the chat, you know, what a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in your mind, you know, should include. So just that, you know, as we move on to the next slide, share in the chat, you know, like what kind of, you know, item would you guys like to discuss? What kind of, um, you know, topics do you think will, will also be talked about in your one-on-one -on -one with a team member? And so, yeah, just, you know, really, really want to emphasize that there is trust building that needs to happen. And there is also um, the opportunity to, to um, really get to know the family of this team member and what are the struggles, what are the things that they're happy about and, and the sharing of like how you guys can meet, you know, that, that individual. Um, and I will go ahead, I think we're, we're being prompted to move on. So yes, I'm gonna go ahead and- Oh, sorry, Adelita, I was just- <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. I think we're going to move on to the next slide now. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't behind you, but my mistake. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so yeah, just I would, again, invite folks to share in the chat what kind of things that you might want to share on a one-on-one -on -one that is also, you know, mutually you think 
interesting to a teammate. And I will pass it to Lupita for the next slide. So um, I, I kind of wanted to elaborate a little bit on what Adelita was saying about the one-on-ones being super important. I actually wanted to give just a personal experience. I'll make it brief because I know I'm supposed to be on the next slide, but. Actually, I think the slide is wrong. Uh, if you could just rewind it one slide, Keisha. I wasn't going to say anything. There <laughs> you are. Right there. I apologize. Yeah. That's I'm okay. just going to roll with it. <laughs> I'm just going to roll with it. I'll do it. <laughs> No, but um, it's just when when you have um, a team that you're working with and you're going through a pandemic, in some areas, people are flooding. In some areas, people have wildfires here in California, wildfires. It's so important to check in with each other and just, I put in the chat, treat each other like family. Like we're, we're working with extended family here. You know, we're not just organizers. We're like part of this bigger network. To me, I always think of things in terms of extended family. And sometimes you don't know who you're organizing with or working with. You might be their only point of contact because we're in a pandemic. Maybe they don't have other people that you know check in on them. So it's really important to reach out and, and do you know what I, me and Adelita used to call wellness checks or just checking in and just, like she said, building the trust is so important. Um, following up, it's so important, you know, just showing that um, organizer, team member that you care, you care about their life, their family, ask about how their children are doing, and people in the community you work with, because um, really, it's about building those bonds and those healthy relationships with people and, and having them be part of your, almost like an extended family is what I, I, that's how I work. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Thanks, Adelita. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to like mention before we move on to the next slide is that uh, the picture that was in the slide I was on, um, it, it's pre pandemic. So there's no masks. It was, um, it was, you know, this was right before the pandemic hit guys. And um, so we were, you know, in a safe place to gather without masks and you know, to hold a, a baby in such an early stage, you know, and that's probably something that we wouldn't, you know, do right now where, um, you know, gathering requires, you know, some safety protocols, but, um, you know, in, in the pandemic. <laughs> Adelita, that is so important because, you know, a lot of people have anxiety around this uh, pandemic. Yeah. And actually, that's a very, very good point because we do have to consider the times that we're in. And I always ask, because um, I go up everywhere masked up anyways, regardless. Right. And to me, I'm just always going to do that until this thing's over. That's how I am. I don't shake hands anymore. And I don't really give hugs unless I feel comfortable doing so. So before I hug someone, I always ask, is it okay if I give you a hug? Or I put my elbow out if I don't want to get hugged and I say elbows. And so just respecting that person's uh, boundaries and, and what they feel, you know, even though we might all have political differences, still respecting where we're coming from um, around this pandemic is a lot of people are traumatized. So we do have to thank you for mentioning that, Adelita. We do oh, yeah. have to be aware of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, even now, you know, I, uh, you know, because some people are, you know, a little bit more vulnerable, the one on one might happen over a phone call. You know, some people do not have access to Wi Fi or computer. So I'm going to pick up that that phone and call them and have a conversation, do the wellness check and make sure they're okay. And that's exactly what I've done, you know, with several of my team members and when the smoke got really intense because some of them are displaced survivors of the campfire. And so I know that uh, the smoke is triggering, like this whole time is triggering for them. They're like, it's, it, you know, and so I just reach out and I, there's no, no ask. I'm calling a check on them and say like, are you okay? Um, I know, you know, is this, are, how are you doing right now? And they appreciate that because it means, you know, I know what they've been through. And so I have done plenty of wellness checks during this time and it, it's, it's appreciated. And also it's important because if people are not doing well, 
you know, you, you need to like figure out the next step. You know, if someone's having a hard time, you got to ask, like, should I call someone? Do I need to call a medical professional or something of that nature? And so, you know, that, that's, you know, that's happened. I've been called uh, from emergency rooms in the past because some people have no one else to call. And so just know that, you know, when you're working with frontline, that sometimes means you're the only person that, you know, these individuals might have to call because they've been displaced, because they their houses have burned down in another town. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> like, go, you can move on to the next slide, Keisha. Uh, values and interests. Um, so basically, um, yeah, I just want to go over like, you know, values, interests, and resources. We we have resources, you know, to share at Mothers Out Front. These trainings are resources that we can share. And if someone wants to know more about uh, what we can offer, you know, you make sure you put that like out there for them to um, to definitely take apart, just like you are all here at this training. Um, but really, relationships are important to organizing. Uh, to build around our shared values, our common interest. And of course, you know, um, th this training isn't the only resources we have. You know, I might have uh, connections to local resources because of the work I do on climate. You know, I'm connected to different county. I'm aware of different county resources. And if someone is joining the team, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, there's also this is happening here locally. You know, please you know, know that this is available. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that you can share with someone. Um, and also, you know, having a shared value is gonna, it's gonna develop that commitment, you know, to the movement um, and a place for, for that individual and team member. You know, it's like, you have a place here. Um, you know, everyone can do something, even if it's, just picking up the phone to, you know, give an online public comment or, you know, being a, a support person to someone that is giving public comment on a county meeting or, you know, city council. Um, you know, that we all play different roles and, you know, depending on how this team member is showing up, you meet them where they're at. And um, it creates a solid foundation for this ongoing relationship uh, that you are building. And so, yeah, that's just important to understand as, as you start to build these relationships. And I believe you can go on to the next slide. And Adelita and Lupita, I want to give a quick time check on this sure. section. We're a minute behind. Um, okay. So maybe the, the next few slides, um, we probably will have to keep it a little shorter. Okay, thank you, Keisha. Yes, thank you. Is this the right slide? Yeah, you're, that's the right slide. Okay. So when building a movement, um, the relationships are the building blocks of the intersectional diverse movement. So what we mean by that is um, relationship building is just as important to me personally. I have seen especially working with frontline communities the relationship building the trust building is just as important as the organizing work um, building trust and bridges for long-term relationships uh, listening to the wisdom and values of diverse stakeholders uh, learning about the strengths and needs of a community is extremely important especially if you're going into a community that you're not necessarily able to identify with learning about their needs, their strengths, and what issues are important to them. Like I really build on this a lot because how can we bring people in to a movement if it does, they don't have uh, agency invested in it? So also including issues that are concerns from that community and not just coming in and imposing like this idea or this agenda and then expecting everyone to just show up and support it. Uh, sharing about yourself, um, the mothers out front, the history of mothers out front, uh, oral traditions, very important in, in many cultures. 
and um, being able to story tell and share stories is, is very, very important. Um, finding shared interests. And that's, that's one of the goals of sharing stories is that in, ultimately you could find ways to identify with individuals, you know, based on sharing interests. Uh, building the movement to fully represent the communities um, in which we organize. And that's very important because like I said, if we don't have like uh, things that people can identify with, why are they going to want to join and help our movement if they can't identify with it? So like you might have an issue and that we're trying to push as an organization, but you also have to localize the work that you do. So we need a big we need to build a big movement to take on climate change. And our work for a livable climate needs to go hand in hand with ending racism, classism, sexism, and other oppressions. And some of this is gonna be having to dip deep, dip deep down within ourselves and getting a big fat mirror, myself included. This work has really made me think a lot about even myself and just really dive deep into a lot of the personal issues that we might have and finding a way to overcome our own personal hardships or our own struggles in order to benefit the planet. And so that has really been a journey for us here at Mothers Out Front and just also as individual organizers being able to overcome your personal hardship and grow and, and become strong in order to continue building the movements and building relationship within these communities. Thank you, Lupita. Um, and this is just a really quick slide, you know, uh, you know, you see like the Scarface, you know, <laughs> like very like transactional, like what do you think of when you think about, um, you know, this, you know, individual character, they're building an empire on, you know, other people's, you know, pain, basically, that's not what we want. We want to share wisdom, like on the right side, and be transformative with what we're doing and our efforts and the relationships that we're building. So it should not be a transaction, it should not feel like a transaction, or feel like I'm doing this for that, it should be like, we're in this together. And this is a movement of all of us. And, and, you know, we're again, you're meeting folks where they're at and, you know, not expecting them to, you know, jump over a, you know, a big hoop that they, they're not ready for, or not, don't have the means to do. So it's really about, you know, meeting people where they're at and empowering them from that place. And so, yeah, next slide, Keisha. Um, five components of a one-to-one, -one. Uh, we share our stories. Uh, we learn the stories of the people that we're working with, uh, share the story of mothers out front, sharing hope, um, identify shared values and opportunities for working together, and firm up uh, for the next steps. And those are the five basic components. You can, uh, it doesn't have to go in that order. <laughs> But it is important um, that when you, like for instance, in uh, the Latinx community in Mexicanos, when we greet each other, we always talk about where we're from, our backgrounds. Um, I work with a lot of native communities, the same thing. Um, they'll go into like their clan, the familiar, the fam family lineage. And so to, to us storytelling that oral history, that oral tradition is very important in our communities. Um, so sharing the story is very personal. It also shows that you're trusting the person that you're sharing the story with. So you're not just going to ask them, oh, what's your life? What's your background? And, you know, you're going to also give back by sharing your own story when it's appropriate and having that exchange at the appropriate time and not right. really like prying into either just building that trust and letting it kind of flow and happen naturally on its own. And so the more you get to know that person, the more you can identify with their story or and share those values. And that val the values, uh, sharing of values is the beginning of building that, those blocks towards a firm foundation and building trust and long-term, long-term commitment. Um, the thing is, I really wanna talk about long-term commitment because when you're working with communities of color, if you say, I'm gonna help you and then you cut out 
that's really horrible. Like it does, it's more trauma on top of the trauma these communities are already facing. And I see somebody is asking, where do we find the Mothers Out Front story? Adelita, do you know a little bit about, I'm kind of, I've joined maybe like a year and a half ago. So I'm still kind of learning some of the background information as well. Um, um, yeah, I would just would like say, to speak a little bit. Yeah, I would just say Thank when you. I share our story as far as, and you can actually move on to the next slide, Keisha, because that's part of what this um yeah is you know basically um you know when i say you know i'm with mothers out front and you know i start from our origin story here locally first like you know uh, how i organize you know the moms here in the capital region which includes sacramento and yolo counties and then i and then i go on to say you know the original uh, uh founders are from like the east coast actually so we're a national org um but there's definitely um a, a, a long in-depth uh, story that you know vanessa being one of the founders and um and, and that they have more details around that but basically when we talk about sharing our story it's really about speaking from the heart um and and why you got involved right uh, so it's really kind of just it, you're you're expressing your motivation for the movements and around climate change. And of course, as mothers, we are motivated by, you know, protecting resources, you know, for the future generations and our children. So that's really, you know, what what you know, I tell them my story of why um, I've gotten involved in, and have been involved for many years, even before Mothers Out Front, you know, I just, it became that um, when I came to Mothers Out Front, it was definitely something I aligned with from like the work I had already been doing. And so I share like my own personal narrative always, you know, because we have been touched by climate change here locally with the fires and, you know, of course the heat um and and so that's something that everyone can understand that i'm talking to because they're in the same area yeah. and so really again just being genuine speaking from your heart um and and why i've made the choice to to get involved and that that is something that resonates with individuals and some people might just say like oh that's nice i don't have time for that then that's okay you know that's you're like oh, i'm glad that i'm still sharing my story you know so it's not about like every single person has to join the team. That's the hope, but it's also understanding that some people might not have the capacity to do so. And so it's that's an important acknowledgement as well. And so, you know, it, it's just you share where you can, when you can, and um, when it's appropriate. And it's up to each individual here to be able to make those assessments um, uh, where you're at. And so, uh, yeah, I think Quick time check. We have four minutes on this section. OK, go ahead. Uh, you can move on. Uh, Lupita, do you want to take that? And we can take this one. It, we'll keep it brief. Well, just learning the stories of other people is, is very important. And remembering the details, because <laughs> it's it could be hard sometimes if people do share their story to remember everything. But just a couple of, of important details. Um, it's just really important to make sure that you're listening attentively <laughs> and to learn about their background. Um, you can also uh, do a community assessment. There's a lot of websites that help with, um, I have some friends that are very, very <laughs> deeply involved and they're able to get like demographics about a city. I don't know if anybody wants to put anything in the chat if they know how to get those websites I don't know off the top of my head but I know there's ways you can go into a county and find the demographics what kind of like the income levels and things like that um but the best way to do a community assessment honestly and well this was pre-pandemic but I think it's still relevant today PPE and go out in a safe way to actually go out and just talk to the people. I like to kind of feel an area. I go to the, the store, the 7-Eleven or, you know, the small shops and just talk to the workers, talk to the people coming in and out and ask questions. I mean, that's really, um, if you're in a small community, especially, 
um, you can get a lot of uh, information that way about a community and and just learning everybody's unique skills, what they have to contribute. Um, me and Adelita have been working very closely together throughout the pandemic. She can tell when I'm stressed out. She could tell when I've bitten off more than I could chew. And she'll tell me, hey, you know, give me advice. You could do this or if it's too much for you. Um, so she's constantly checking in on her team leaders to see how um, she can also uh, help them if they need food. Like she's asked us if we need food boxes things like that. I mean, she really doesn't have to go there, but she does. And that's assessing everybody has their unique skill. And so just finding where people fit and what, how much their capacity is and not overwhelming people, just understanding their story and understanding them and who they are as an individual, as a person. And then that's uh, a good way you can kind of see, maybe find some ways that they um, could fit with their skills in the community and, and be really good organizers. Thank you, Lupita. Um, and I think on this next slide, um, Keisha, I'll just keep this one brief because I know we're kind of behind on time, but just share mothers out front. I think I've already touched on this anyways, um, but yeah, uh, okay, there you go. Um, yeah, just really, um, you know, you could see me and my some of my team members and we're at the Capitol, but basically, you know, being able to um come together at actions obviously right now it's kind of a sketchy time to gather but uh, uh that's pre-pandemic that you see there but really just kind of being able to take part uh, in this bigger movement is actually something that brings teams together it is inspiring based on the hope because you know, especially right now, we need to, like, no, we are the hope. This thing we are the, uh, someone needs to meet themselves. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, just we can move on to the shared values. So, um, yeah, identify and share values and potential opportunities to work together ask individuals to take a specific action if appropriate. You know, uh, I just wanna emphasize if appropriate. If it's not appropriate, don't do that. <laughs> um, again, you know, it's always important to assess individuals capacity and just, you know, also just ask them if they have the capacity to do any, any volunteer work for the team. Um, so being like, direct like that is helpful you know just be like oh do you have capacity and if you don't that's fine you know uh it, it's okay if they don't if some people have different skill sets that they can share like you know photography like i'll be like can you can you take you know photographs at our team meeting or at these actions there's all kinds of roles um individuals can share um you know, can can partake in and, you know, again, share different skill sets that they have. We, you know, as organizers, we're very, you know, we're strapped, we're doing a lot. So we need as much help as possible. Um, and then go ahead, go on to the next slide. Uh, next steps. Lupita, do you want to take that? Yeah, I was just going to add a little bit to what you were saying. I know we're trying to be brief, but just what I really appreciate is every time I have a conversation with um, any organizers that I work with, the first thing we ask each other is, do you have time to talk? Even just acknowledging in the beginning, right in the beginning of a conversation, because I'll have people, other people that I stopped working with because it's a trigger. <laughs> they'll just come to me and they'll dump a bunch of um tasks and they won't ask me hey how are you doing how's your day been do you have time to talk and I'm just like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> I haven't seen you in weeks and now you're trying to put all these tasks on me so I actually had to stop organizing with some folks because that was very stressful and like some of us are not able to handle stress the same way and so just being respectful of other people's boundaries and that's something that I think is really important just even the basic ask of, are you, do you have time? Are you available to talk right now? And sometimes I'll tell Adelita, no, I'm sorry. I'm dealing with my son right now. This is kind of crazy. Can I call you later? And she'll do the same sometimes. She'll be like, well, I'm gonna have to do this. And I have a meeting right now. And so even just the, the ability to be able to have that uh, relationship with another member and saying, hey, do you have time to talk? That's important. And so some of the next steps, um, um 
Oh, what? We're gonna gonna move on to the because yeah. they yeah because I'm getting flagged on time. Okay, <laughs> but um didn't want to cut Lupita off. I think. Oh, that's okay. The art of the ask actually covers some of this, so um I really wanted just to kind of briefly um go ahead and and touch on this, which is you know of course really um building a movement is making sure everyone can work together and of course you know take on you know steps if about if they have the capacity and again our our main our main objective is to like you know stop the fossil fuel industry from causing global warming um and everyone can contribute in in big or, or small ways um so the next again you know it's really about asking individuals if they have the capacity and if so, like in what ways can they, you know, contribute to the movement? And um, that's that's really is really just being being um, clear about how can how what capacity they have and what what do they see themselves doing within the team? And then um, of course, you know, everyone should should feel inspired at this point to to take the next steps um and then you know if they can't just, just if they're unable to you just say like that's okay you know there should be no sense of like guilt or anything of that nature because they cannot and, and make sure that that is something that is never an element in a next step if you know there should be zero guilt uh and i always say like well i look forward to catching up to you um on the next or you know i'll i'll hey i'll let you know how this meeting went and you know so that you can stay up to date and maybe you can make the next thing so always make sure you're keeping your team members in the loop and um letting them know how they can contribute um for for maybe the next time they might have capacity so we'll go ahead and move it on to the next slide Okay, what we're on the demo? What? All right. <laughs> um uh yeah, wait, where are we? I the slides keep flipping around. What's going on? Okay, so we're on the do's and don'ts. Okay, so me and Lupita are gonna really quickly uh well which one do you want to take, Lupita? The do's or the don'ts? I could do the don'ts. Okay, so do find a time and place and an activity that fits and works for each person um schedule a set amount of time for the conversation and be flexible based on the needs of that person um and then of course listen a big big uh, thing that we've been emphasizing is listening and of course ask questions that are appropriate um and you know of course that are not triggering follow the five-step model and share your story your vision and your experiences um, and of course, be clear about when and what uh, of your next interaction. As I mentioned, um, there should be like an opportunity for a team member to get involved if they have the capacity and if they can't, you know, keep them looped in, be, tell them, and if they don't have a computer, like if you say like, I'll send you the notes to, from the meeting or whatever, if they don't have a computer or access to Wi-Fi, just say, I'll call you, I'll let you know how it went make it easy if, they, if individuals do not have access say you will fill them in and then lupita will cover the don'ts so some of the things you don't want to do are push to hold a prescribed meeting um like i had mentioned before just it's kind of like stressful for some people because you don't know what is going on in their personal life at that moment um so the time location uh way of the meeting that doesn't fit into a person's life you don't want to obligate them into doing things they can't be unclear you don't want to be unclear about the purpose and length of the conversation or push to have a meeting for a set amount of time that doesn't fit their needs again that goes back to the boundaries and respecting um, other people's boundaries um we always want to be in um in a capacity where we we don't want to talk more than we listen so we want to be in a listening capacity and try not to uh, talk too much about your private interests uh, we don't want to talk about our private interests too much because it's kind of like 
we don't want to like too much emphasis on me, 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 because you want to be in a listening capacity more than anything else. And we don't want to miss the opportunity to uplift how things can change. If there's uh, some negativity going on or some issues that arise, always um, try to provide a solution or maybe um, uh, make some suggestions as to how things can change because we want to offer people hope. We don't want them to stay kind of in like a negative note or if they're having a bad day, we want to uplift people as we're working with them. And don't end the conversation without clear next steps in place how to move the relationship forward. So like Adelita said, the follow up is just as important as the conversation, because that's how people know that you're interested and that you care. Thank you, Lupita. And um, all right, it's time for our demo. And I think that's between me and Lupita. We're going to demo a one on one. And um, you know how I don't know. Are we going to be on the main screen? Do we like take off? Well, I don't know. Um, I can stop sharing. Yeah. OK. Um, so basically, um, how I normally conduct a one on one, by the way, I, I got a, a team leaders texting me right now. And she's like, I'm helping her with something else. But how I normally reach out first is I shoot a text to Lupita and I'm like, hey, like, um, you know, I want to touch base. So I like psh, psh, shooting you a text psh, 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 to see, as Lupita mentioned, if she's available. Like, hey, let me know when you have time. Like, I'm on her time because Lupita's, you know, she's busy, a busy mom. And so I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Also, like, you don't. What do you like and all in her court? And then Lupita <laughs> will respond. Uh, oh, I think her internet might be a little bit sketch. So she has Yeah, to sorry if I, my video goes off the internet sketch. So usually when I get the text from Adelita, I'll respond right away. And so she'll know. But sometimes I don't respond right away, which is also her cue to either call me if it's urgent for a follow up or to send another text. But I'll respond right away if I'm available or not. And then um, I guess she'll call me or I'll call her. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and then I call when at the time that she's available. And so again, you know, I'm not pushing my time. You know, I have, I make myself available when Lupita is available. And of course it's, it's a wellness check at first. How are you? Like, how are the kids? And, you know, of course, I love Lupita's kids. So I want to know how everything's going with them. Um, but then I'm like, hey, like the meeting, you know, are you going to show up to the meeting? You know, and then we check in about that. Like we want to make sure that um, about the meeting that we are supporting each other because we do attend meetings where um, maybe, you know, we're concerned about something, an agenda item being pushed that we don't agree on. And so we have to check in again, our values, like what do we agree on? Like, and what, how are we going to support each other in this meeting, you know? And so Lupita, you could chime in there. Yeah, I was gonna say, so usually if Adelita asks me, how's your family? Do you have time to talk? I'll be, yeah, I have time to talk. The kids are doing good. And then we'll reflect back about some meetings that we might have been in together. So we'll do reflections. Oh, we were both at the meeting on Monday. What did you think about this? What did you think about that? And then we'll do something like share resources. Oh, did you know that this week we're gonna have um, another meeting on this, the climate, it's like, for instance, the county has climate compact meetings. And she, what I really like about interacting with Adelita as a supervisor, she's been so amazing to keep me because she knows Again, as mothers, we have kids. I mean, maybe something health issues going on because of this whole pandemic. So she'll ask, you know, are you busy Friday? Did you know there's going to be a climate compact meeting? And I'll be like, oh my gosh, thank you for reminding me. Because sometimes I'll forget and I don't have time to check emails. And so then I'll tell her, you know, Adelita, did you know that um, at this Tuesday's board meeting, they're going to be discussing on agenda item 54, racial issues, or they're going to be talking about the climate action advisory body. And so things like that. And so we'll just kind of, so it doesn't dip in straight into the, hey, I need you to hear in this and this at this time. 
it's actually a really long process. Like a lot of our conversations um, take like half an hour, 40 minutes. So I know when I'm sitting down with Adelita, you an know, hour, girl. yeah, <laughs> an, hour. <laughs> an hour or two, you know, but you know, cause sometimes we only check in sometimes once a week or even twice a month. It depends. And so like, that's our time. So I know when I'm going to be sitting down with her, that I'm going to give her that time. And, and that's like respect, you know, because she's going to give me that time too. I know she's even more busy than I am. And so that's just a little bit, I don't know. So I don't know if you guys wanted like an actual conversation back and forth, but. I feel like that's a good, I mean, we're sharing what we, yeah. you know, how we, how we communicate. And so really it's just meant it's a sharing experience yeah. and what we're going to do next. Um, and Keisha, you can start sharing is we're going to allow you all as attendees to practice some of these lessons and, and pointers that we're sharing with you here. So um, we want to put you in pairs and, and send you into breakouts where you can like practice some of these do's and don'ts and role play. Um, and then once one has gone, you know, as the lead, the next person can go as the lead. And so, um, we're going to go ahead and sh send you into breakouts. And so go ahead and follow the prompt. Of Can I just the... give a little quick recap, Adelita? Yeah, please. So do. just don't forget, we want to practice checking in, availability. Do you have time and space to talk? How are you doing? I like to do like a little wellness check. We do it with each other when Ali Adelita and I are talking, a little wellness check. And then just, you know, not dipping into the ask right away and just you know, giving a little background information and then slowly kind of transforming into the organizing work. However way you guys want to do it, but just kind of. That sounds good. Um, I believe that Sheila or um, the tech is setting up the uh, breakout rooms. Yes, and we're going to actually have 10 minutes instead of 14 minutes in Great. the breakout. That should be enough. Five minutes. I think that's more than enough. Yeah. Yeah. Five minutes each, guys. It was too short. All right. Who had fun at least? I mean, if it wasn't fun, then you weren't doing it right. I just <laughs> um, I guess put little hearts if you guys like had a, like a fun interaction. I did. I'm putting a heart. <laughs> um, all right. So we only have five minutes for the debrief. So um, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna like just ask for a, a volunteer that hasn't gone to kind of just speak up and um, and then we we might have to like just move on and ask others to share in the chat. Let's see. Does any do we have any volunteers? Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to pick on someone then sherry are you willing to share your one-on-one -on -one experience no, okay. the, oh me yeah you oh, okay yeah so i mean i didn't actually get to go i was partnered with max but max has done many one-on-ones i've never done one so she kind of demoed for me sorry my father in law's talking in the background um, um she demoed for me and i definitely learned a lot from her and it just felt really natural and very personal and so um it was great Awesome. Um, I'm who I'm gonna pick on another person that hasn't gone just in real quick some feedback. Um, Rashid. No, she's saying no. Okay. Um, Sarah Simon. Okay. Um, I basically was having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Suzanne Rozak, who I know who's in it in a where she has a new uh, chapter and I have a small uh, getting reorganized chapter and we found that we are both um, both of our chapters are interested in composting and as we talked and I heard her concerns and what she was doing uh, it turns out that I have some stuff up here that will work 
for her tabling she's going to do in a week. So that was that was, it was just very fortuitous that we were able to talk and we we talked a little bit about how we were doing and and uh, so that was good and and we've both we've do both done some one on one training before from Massachusetts uh, so that was good for us yeah okay great um, all right so there's a few questions and I'm gonna invite um, participants here to just put in the chat um, maybe. What did you enjoy about the one-on-one? -on -one? I, I really want to focus on the joy today. Um, so just, and, it, and also if there was some like blocks, like some like, oh, I wasn't, didn't get the flow, put it in the chat and maybe we can like help answer that. So um, we're going to go ahead and move it on to, um, since we're, we are short on time, um, okay. Plan for using your new skill. Um, let me see, was that you, Lupita, or uh, that's Sheila? All right, I just want to say let's unmute and give a great round of applause to Adelita and Lupita for doing the one on one training today. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you Yay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you, Lupita, great. for being my partner on this. Um, so let's think about your plan for using your new skill. Um, shout it out or drop it in the chat. Can you name one or two people that you've had initial contact with? Because of course, as we've been talking about, there are a lot of ways to use one-on-ones. Um, it's not just when you first met someone, but that is what we're focused on in this series is like really building a base, which means going out, planting a lot of seeds, getting those seedlings, like feeding those seedlings. That's that leadership development. Um, so can you think of someone that maybe you've just met, either canvassing, tabling, you know, anywhere, and that you know you want to reach out to for a one-on-one -on -one and just shout out their name or leave it in the chat? Sometimes when we say it or when we write it, it becomes more real, right? I wanted to um, respond to a, a comment in the chat, if that's okay, really quick. Sure, go for it. Uh, Lavanya said, it felt weird to be asked. Uh, and I wondered if folks would be generous if I called them out of the blue. And so I really, you know, I really wanted to like answer that. Uh, yeah, you know, if, if, if um, you, you have this person's phone number, right? For a reason, like you have this contact. Um, what I would recommend is again, not calling out of the blue, but texting and 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 saying hey you know remember we met at the booth you know the tabling event you know or at this event where you were tabling remind them first of who you are um and then you know ask them uh like hey i wanted to follow up and i wonder if you have time first you know ask about their availability to even talk but remind them about who you are and um, where you guys met. That's a really important thing um, if you're gonna do a follow-up from um, a tabling event or some kind of initial meeting you had with this individual. I just wanted to respond. Go ahead, Sheila, take it away. All right, thank you. No, that's a really good point. And absolutely, um, thank you for answering that question. It is, it is, it can be weird. And so sometimes I also, I'll add, I'll say like at a tabling event, let's say, I will ask someone if they would be willing to follow up with me and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation so that they know that that call is coming as well. So you can do that, you know, lots of ways to make it not feel like it's out of the blue, um, but that's so important. So thanks for lifting that up. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So follow-up is really a key ingredient to good organizing. Um, a lot of times people will get this great list of, you know, at Mothers Out Front, we call it hot leads. You know, you've talked to 100 people canvassing and 20 of them agreed to do one-on-ones with you. And then, and, and that might be stretching it, right? Like maybe we went to a tabling event and talked to 20 people in five, so they would do one-on-ones with us, whatever the numbers are. Um, it can be really hard with everything going on in everyone's lives to reach back out and make sure that we 
call them or text them and set up that one-on-one -on -one in a timely manner before they forget who the heck we are, right? Has anyone raise your hand just like if that's been a problem that you've dealt with in your team or chapter? I see a few hands. I was like, come on, be honest with me, guys. <laughs> I know I have, you know, things get busy. You have a million different wheels spinning. And so that's why it's important to just have a plan in place in our teams, especially as your team grows and it gets busier and there's like more things going on at once. So what are the things that you do to make sure that you get that follow-up happening in a timely manner? Um, so drop it in the chat and let us know what, if you have some ways that you help your team, you know, re do that reach out within a week or so. Oh, Alyssa is asking, what do you do if you call email and don't hear back? Well, so it's, that's an interesting question. I mean, my mind goes two places. Like one, some people uh, use email, but they don't use text. Or some people use text, but they don't use, you know, whatever other method as much. And so if you've used all of these different methods and they're not getting back to you, you probably just drop it. Um, I want to emphasize one thing about this, like, you know, like it, it's, it, you know, it's cool to like, say, you know, you shoot a text, you send an email, um, but leave your phone number uh, in the email if maybe they don't have like phone reception, you know, because we do work with people in rural areas, very rural areas here. And so reception can be hit or miss. And sometimes the text doesn't go through. So just like making sure your phone number is available in an email might be something that they can access at a later time. But also like, don't be like a stalker either, like creepy, you know, <laughs> like don't do that. Don't like, let them hit you up when, you know, they're available. And again, the capacity is there. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a fine line and, and you know, to like becoming a stalker, don't do that. <laughs> Just like how Sheila said, um, yeah. But yeah, rural areas is a real thing. Like work, working in rural areas, which I do, reception is like, it's, it's sometimes awful. And so don't take it personally. All right, thank you very much. Um, so let's go to the next slide. I think we're almost at the last slide here. And if people need other ideas and ways of, you know, doing that follow up in a timely manner, um, you know, write write to me at Mothers Up Front. Maybe we'll do a training on it too. I know that's a big deal. Um, so we're just going to do a quick review here. And as I do that, drop in the chat. What are some of the highlights from the series you've learned so far? And so again, we've talked about how it's so important to do base building to really reach out to a lot of people in order to bring in less um, because that rule of organizing is we've got to reach out to 100 people to get 10 involved and so don't feel bad when that happens but that's the rule of organizing you know we've got to really plant a lot of seeds to get a lot of plants um, and it's so important to do that across all sorts of differences or else we just can't take on this fossil fuel industry so we've talked about how to do that outreach today we did um, the one-on-one -on -one conversation. And so what's next? Drum roll, please. Next slide. Um, we have the next session is the group meeting. And so that's gonna be this Thursday. It will be the last of our four, four trainings in this series. And it's, it's really just talking about how to roll those one-on-ones into then developing, not necessarily your organization, but your groups of people. So the idea of rolling a snowball, like you're picking up momentum, you're picking up the numbers that you're working with, but also going deep and developing those relationships. And so group meetings are a way to what's next after the one-on-one. -on -one. And we'll be talking about that on Thursday. I got a quick uh, last minute uh, before we log off. I just want to thank everybody for their time. And also these are just the guides based on our experience in our community it's not a, like a cookie cutter situation you know the approach may be different in your community based on you know the demographics or you know the different you know individuals and communities that you're working in so just this is just a guide and we you know we hope that it's helpful for you all right is there a slide right before this that shows people a feedback form either before or after. Yeah, okay. 
So we're going to drop in the chat a feedback form. If you could please fill that out for today, it should take about three minutes, but it's so helpful to know what worked and what didn't work for people. Um, I really take that seriously and would love your feedback. And then for those of you who are not yet members or want to donate, we'll also drop in the chat um, how to do that. Uh, Shauna, if you're there, if you could drop those in, that would be great. Thank you so much. And then thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Adelita and Lupita, for today. And we'll see you on Thursday. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a beautiful night.